Welcome to the Class of the Little Sass podcast. I'm your host, Carrie Millspaw, best-selling author and award-winning motivational speaker with over 20 years in the personal development industry. I believe that the more you know, the more you grow. With each podcast episode, I will educate and empower you, girlfriend to girlfriend style, on how to create a happy life from motherhood guidance, career and business advice, to feeling confident in your relationships and everything in between. This is Real Talk Radio. Let's jump right into today's episode. Well, hello there. I am so glad you could join me today. I can't wait to dive into something that I'm a little passionate about. It's business, a little bit, just a little. I've been an entrepreneur for over a decade. Gosh, I think it's just in my blood. And I really want to give you guys a broader perspective. So I'm going to cover three compelling reasons why you should have a side hustle. And this is really clearly not aimed towards a current entrepreneur. This is more or less towards those that are have a W-2 job, you know, that you're the employee, you punch in, you punch out, or you're, you have a boss, you don't get to control your wages, you don't get to control your hours, that sort of thing. You're, you know, some people would say you work for the man. Well, I don't know where that term comes from. So <laughs> I could research it and I'm sure it's interesting, but I'm not, I'm not going to bore us with that. But Long story short, though, I truly have been doing this for a very, very long time. I was consulting back when my daughter was born, gosh, before that even, 20 plus years now that I think about it. And I really, truly believe in this. And I wouldn't put it on my podcast if I wasn't passionate about it. And yes, there's so many things that you do and you're like, oh, everybody should know this, but they don't. You think it's just common knowledge, but it's not. Most people go to school get a job, go to school and the job they want, you know, the career shapes your whole world and the type of schooling you need and certifications and degrees and so on. And generally we just choose careers that have a big dollar sign. So kind of an interesting thing, um, before we dive into the three reasons, the th compelling reasons, not just any reason, but compelling ones. The other night, I just have to share a story because my daughter's on a job search motion right now, Sunday night. Was it Sunday night? Yes, because I wanted to set the stage for the week. So I practice what I preach 100%. I use it in my parenting. I use it with my clients. I use it everywhere I am. It's just who I am. It's in my DNA. So I took her to the hot tub over here in our community that we live in. And it's kind of funny. Um, we started to head out about 1030. We thought no one's going to be there. We're just going to sink into the hot jets and chill under the stars. Wrong. There's people we could hear them. We're like, really? Jeez, you know, <laughs> we could hear one loud mouth or maybe two or three. And these are my neighbors. So it's all good. But we knew there was a few guys in there. So we're like, nope, let's wait it out. So here we are taking our flip flop, flip flop, flip flop down the sidewalk with our beach towels back into the house ever so quietly. We didn't want to be obvious, but it is pitch black out. So we head back into the house. I'm like, okay, shy. Let's just give it an hour and see what happens. So I just wanted quiet alone time with my baby girl. I wanted some mommy daughter time, quality time, the time where I don't have her distracted by her phone, things around us, things we need to do. Let's get out of our element. And if you're like me, your house is the biggest distraction ever, especially if you work there. There's housework to do. There's always something to do, whether it's my work or whatever. So we waited an hour. Then we started to do the little creep, creep, creep towards the clubhouse. Do we hear any voices? Nope. I think we're clear. So we had this calm, quiet time under the stars. And I want you to take notes on what we talked about, because this is going to just segue perfectly into what our topic is today. I wanted her to, to not, because she's, getting really in her head about this job stuff. And it's not like we've even really been looking. I'll be real. The girl could walk into any retailer and get the job within five seconds. She's overqualified for most stuff, but she wants to broaden her reach and see what else is out there. So I said, okay, time to place your order. You may 
may use terms like place your order with the universe. You may use terms such as pray about it, manifest it, whatever that looks like. Get intention, set intentions, because that is where things get crystal clear. The clearer you are, the faster you can attract things. And this isn't law of attraction stuff, but when you're unclear, you won't even know what it is that you want. And you know, it could come stand right next to you and slap you in the face. And you're like, I don't even know if that's the job I want. No, because you're not clear. You can't see all the green flags. All you see is red flags. Cause again, your head is just foggy. You're not crystal clear on what you want. So I want you to get really, really just hone in with me because I know this step that I worked with her, this little practice I did with her will help you too. So I said, let's tell me the five, five top things, not three, but five top things you want out of this job. We're, we're, we're not talking about titles. We're not talking about even the type of job. We're not even talking about like what skills she needs for this job. We didn't even discuss that. We didn't discuss companies. We didn't even discuss where it's located because I know she could do virtual or in person. So her top five, I'll share it with you. I said, number one, what is it that you want to be paid? Get really crystal clear where your deal breaker is. She's brand new. She's 19. She's just breaking into the world. Her deal breaker is she wants to make at least 20 bucks an hour which is a $7 increase, just being really transparent from what she was making before, but she was way underpaid. <laughs> Once we did some comparison, we stay, we, I had her stay, I shouldn't say we, but I had her stick it out with her last job because I wanted her to get the experience. The pay sucked. We knew that, but I'm like, stick it out. It looks better on your resume if you've been there a couple of years versus six months. So she knows what she wants. So I said, okay, get clear on how much that is a year know that that's your deal breaker. Okay. Anything else that's not 20 or higher is gone. Throw it in the garbage can. Okay. Trash delete. Her second one was she wanted to be able to adapt quickly. I said, focus on the feeling. Don't get stuck in the details and don't get stuck in what you don't want. Always when you're pulling things towards you, focus on the want, not the don't want. Because the same energy goes towards the don't want as it does the want. And I know it sounds really silly right now, but that's the truth. You literally focus so much on the negative that that's what you end up pulling in. You're like, I don't want a $5 an hour job. I don't want a $5, $5 an hour job. You'll start to pull that towards you. You're like, why am I only seeing $5 an hour jobs? If they even exist. But I'm sure I sure hope they don't. No one can live on that. But let's just go back right into focusing on what you want. So she wanted to focus on a job that she could adapt to quickly with already her natural skills that she could learn fast, whatever it was, and not feel intimidated or it's not something way out of her strengths. Everybody wants a job that they can jump into and they don't feel like an idiot, right? But you're going to feel dumb. We all have imposter syndrome when we first start. It's just going to happen. I try to, to educate her and remind her often. We all feel that way when we start something new. We all feel dumb, right? We feel so inadequate, but she wants to draw from her strengths. I said, let's find a job that you can adapt to quickly. That's a great one. The third one, she wanted a day shift, a normal lifestyle. It's the balance that I talk about a lot. She knows this from her own experiences. She knows it from her mama preaching it at her over and over and over again, but she knows she doesn't want to work nights. She would prefer Monday through Friday, but overall, she's getting crystal clear that she wants a day shift. She wants the evening. She wants some freedom on the weekends. She wants to have a life. She was working these crazy shifts, 1 to 10.30, and then the next day, 7 a.m. to like 4 or 5. She was working nine-hour plus shifts before, and she knows she doesn't like that. Who would, right? It sucks. Anyone that's worked retail has that yo-yo crazy schedule. I was always exhausted when I worked in retail. The hours, I never seemed to recuperate even on my days off. So that was her third. Her fourth was, do I remember all of these? I'm putting myself on the spot. Her fourth one was, um, hmm, take me back to the hot tub experience and see if I can remember just from our little conversation under the stars. So her fourth one, I'm remembering now, was a cool team to work with. It's something we forget about often when we're trying to pull something towards us. We could have a dream job, but if the employees around us, our team is just 
miserable all the time, it can ruin your day. You can love that job, love the pay, all the boxes check. And then you have a boss that's just a nightmare where your coworkers just drain you every day and they're all about the drama 24 seven. That can be a challenge. And then her fifth one was give or take, she would like to work remote. We do kind of have her set up here in our new home. If she wants to do that, she would like to not have to drive in the winter. That's the real truth right there. But I personally think as her mama, she'll work better with interactions, face-to-face -face connections, building friendships here in our new hometown, in our new town, uh, my hometown, but her new town, Traverse City. So those were her five things. What's interesting is we kind of did some tweaking on her online profiles today. And sure enough, she found something right away that hit almost all of them. But we don't know about a couple because we're going to go scope it out tomorrow. So I'll let you know if she already pulled this in within just two days, guys. We did this Sunday night today when I'm recording this. This is Tuesday. And she is already found something that checks a lot of boxes. So again, you know, when it, you've got your little green flags all lit up, you know, it's okay. Let's keep moving forward. It hits my core values. It hits, it may have still some questions. You may have a few things that you forgot on your list, but at least she knows she's stepping forward into this new possible position and it might hit all the check box boxes. It might not hit the remote one, but we'll see. So I will keep you posted on what we're pulling towards us um, as I'm teaching her this mindset too. So let's jump right into three compelling reasons why you should have a side hustle. And again, I'm, I'm kind of touching the people that don't have one now and those that work a job. And even if you are an entrepreneur, but you have only one stream of income, I want you to at least broaden your perspective on that, on getting really crystal clear. So I'm going to jump right into money because that's a no brainer. Number one reason is streams of income. It is always important to have many money streams. A lot of the time we get so caught up in that one main stream and I can be just as guilty because that's the big one. It's like a waterfall. It's paying all the bills and then some. It's filling up the savings account. It's overflowing my cup. Thank you, Jesus. Super grateful. But then we forget, what if this one stream gets blocked or dries up or somebody magically from higher up than me turns off that faucet altogether? Then what? And that's a scary feeling. And I've been there so many times in the last decade of really big clients, high paying clients. And then, you know, for whatever reason, they can't finish their agreement or you're projected to do another year and it turns into, nope, we've got to pause for two months and then maybe you start back up again. It happens. It happens, especially if you're a contractor like me or self-employed where you're working with contracts and you're independently being paid. So it happens. But even with a J-O-B, guys, let's be real. You don't control anything. You don't get to be the top, top dog unless you are, you know, even as a CEO of a company, you think you, you, you're good to go. You might retire from this company and then something happens and they, they downsize or they do complete job el eliminations. Like they did, um, as many of you know, I've been consulting for Microsoft. We had over 10,000 layoffs in the last, last quarter, Q2 of this year. It was ridiculous, ridiculous, 10,000 plus layoffs and job eliminations. There was entire sections that broke off into the sea. That's what it looked like to me. You, you don't not just have a job. No one does. They're, your department doesn't even exist anymore. No one saw that coming. I saw some of it because I'm the consultant on the sidelines. I knew stuff I couldn't share with the team. I knew it would be bad, but I didn't think it would be that bad. And it was, it was a huge shift um, this summer around July, which to me worked out in my benefit, gave me a month, month and a half to two months to move home, focus on that and then regroup. And sure enough, <laughs> I swear to God, I literally was barely moved in and my agency owner calls me and says, Hey, 
Microsoft needs you back. We've got more projects for you to do. You're ready to go to work. I'm like, yes, your timing is perfect. And you know what? It's not even Microsoft's timing. It's the Lord's timing. Give all the credit to the King of Kings. He always, always is on time. Always, 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 always. I say this so much in my podcast, but now going into this mindset, back to, again, the income streams that are so important, so important. Not just the main one, but also let's get some more trickles in. $500 here, $1,000 there, $200 there. Even if it's, you know, a littlest thing could be investments. But the reason why I want it to be a side hustle, and I'm not going to go super, super deep on what a side hustle looks like or give you ideas. I don't know if we'll have enough time. I'm just trying to convince you to get one. That's like step one. I might record a part two going into what does that look like, Carrie? And I will link it eventually back to this particular podcast so that the two are connected because that's another, that's like ours. We could brainstorm forever. In fact, I, I prefer to brainstorm with people one-on-one -on -one and I do take client sessions or discovery calls. The key thing is, is I like to cater the side hustle to the person. I don't want to take you as the person and try to fit that square peg in a round hole. Like, well, this is your only options. No, you can create any business, any side hustle from any passion ever. There is so much opportunity out there. The digital age has created such an abundance of opportunity. It's ridiculous, ridiculous. It's just unbelievable. So that is for another episode or maybe a discovery call. If you need one of those, reach out to me and go to my carriemillspa.com and just click on contact. So, and mention the podcast, please. Um, going right into the money side, not only do you need other streams in case some dry up or get turned off with you not even having a clue, you know, it's coming. You're, this is something you can more or less get your arms around, have a little more say in the, in the gig, right? You've got the, you're, you're running the show. You're in the driver's seat. You've got the steering wheel. You're the captain of your own employment ship. You're not just a passenger on the bus. And that's what it feels like a lot of the time when you're working a W2 job, you're just, just the passenger on the bus. You don't get to say where it goes or when it goes, or even when it starts, you don't get to say if they stop and let you off you know, kind of sight unseen. So this will give you more of a sense of purpose and that fulfillment as well, which I'm jumping kind of into uh, number two. But one other part I want to talk about too, real quick about streams of income is something that most people don't realize. Even if your side hustle isn't a big money maker, the fact that you have an independent company, and I would suggest registering an LLC through the state, wherever you live. It's really easy to do. You can go to LegalZoom.com. I'm going to link that in the show notes, LegalZoom.com and clearly get um, just a simple LLC. It's just a few hundred dollars. It might, might change, you know, where you're at and get typing myself a note here. It might change where you live or give or take. But anyone can have a standalone LLC that is your own business and it doesn't have to have a special name. It can be literally Mickey Mouse dot Mickey Mouse LLC. Well, trademark probably shouldn't have that. Mine is just Carrie, you know, just your name. You could be your daughter's name, your son's name. It could be your dog's name. Rover LLC. I mean, it does not matter, but not to get too far into the weeds on that. The reason why you want that even if you're just a consultant and you've only done a few consulting gigs throughout the whole year, you want the tax write-offs. If you are employed and you've got a W-2 that comes to you every year and you're looking at your taxes and you barely get a refund and you're so frustrated by how much is taken out, this is one way to avoid that. And I'm not a CPA and I'm not taking any credit or financials um, type of I'm not an expert when it comes to financials, but this much I do know because over 20 years now, gosh, even longer, my, even when I was married to my ex-husband, 
and I was doing wellness coaching as a consultant when my daughter was a baby. And we also had rental properties and he was working full-time for Ford Motor Company. The amount of taxes we paid was ridiculous until we started doing the rental properties, flipping houses, and me consulting as a wellness coach. We would get back crazy numbers for refunds, crazy numbers. Like let's go on a very expensive trip for a month kind of numbers. Cause I don't want to throw out a number and it might not be a lot to you and it might be insanely impossible to reach ever for some of you. But, and this was also 20 years ago, it was crazy. I was like, why didn't we do this sooner? We were paying so much and he worked so much overtime. We'd just get taxed to death. It would take all of it. So this is a way to hang on to some of your money too. Even if your side hustle is not super, super profitable, you can claim a loss on your side hustle. I, I believe it's up to three years. Consult with your CPA. And if you don't have one, get one. They know all the ins and outs of this and they can save you so much money. I have a great one. So that is number one, the big fat dollar sign. Not only will you have an extra stream of income that you have the power to work it as hard as you want and grow it to the point where your side hustle could become your main hustle. How cool is that? And then you can let go maybe of that job you didn't really like in the first place, or it can just help offset the taxes and give you some breathing room a little bit, get a refund once in a while or whatever that looks like, or increase the refund amount. So number one, of course, is the dollar signs. Wouldn't be fair to talk business without profits. Number two, and this is the one that you can't put a dollar sign on. It's the exact opposite. It's that sense of purpose. It's that fulfillment, girls. I talk about this in my upcoming book and how, how having a side hustle is better than sex. I can't even tell you. You feel so important. You feel seen, you feel heard, you give your passion some life. It's got air in its lungs. It's it's out there. It's got a brand. It's got a name. It's got a logo. It's got a website, whatever that is. There is something about <clears throat> when I would work with a client that when we would create their personal brand, that piece was always my favorite. It still is to this day. Personal branding. It's like I have permission to be seen. I don't feel invisible. I have a voice now. My brand, whatever that looks like, it could be selling dog leashes. It doesn't matter, but it's got your energy in it. And now it's it's like you have this footprint on the planet. You've got a footprint out there on the internet world. You exist in a whole new way. And there's that sense of fulfillment that no one, nothing, no money can buy this. No one can replace it. There's just, it's indescribable. When I built my online business in 2013, I was addicted to it. I'm not going to lie. I checked out of the dating world. I didn't care about that anymore. I was so laser focused on my purpose. I was so excited. I, it, it was like, it gave me more life. The more hours I worked, the more energy I had. It was that much fulfillment. I wasn't feeling drained at all. I was feeling full the opposite. I couldn't get enough. I couldn't get enough. Of course, I needed to learn eventually balance. <laughs> That's what, you know, that work-life balance thing. But when it gives you so much energy in life, you don't know how to turn it off. You're attracted to it. You're like, oh, hi, laptop on a Sunday. I'll just do one or two things. There's just something about it. I'll never forget a time where I was working on my e-news, <clears throat> my e-newsletter to go out and I would always do it on Sunday afternoons and I was still working my corporate job and I had, I was building out my exit strategy at that time. And I had just started dating a guy and he, I think I want to say he was in a softball league or baseball or something. And he let me know, I'm in your area. I'm going to stop by. Is it cool if I stop by? It's a Sunday afternoon. He's probably thinking, well, oh, you're home. I'll swing by. I let him know in a text. Okay. But I'm in the middle of working on something, but I should be wrapped up soon. I let him in. He hops on the couch. He's watching me on my laptop. I'm almost done. I've got my back to him. I couldn't care less if he was here or not. I was just focused. I got to get this out. I'm writing a message to my email list. You know, typical 
e-commerce type of marketing and he started to get huffy and puffy. He was all, are you going to be working all day? Cause I'm like right here. And he was getting kind of snippy. And I was like, dude, you, there's a door. You, I didn't invite you over. You're just in the area. And I told you ahead of time I'm working on something. So it's like interesting how my energy would shift to, I'm working in my passion right now. You need to step aside. You know, that's how much I'd gone from this dating frenzy to not at all because it's that yummy and delicious. I'm not kidding. It's that yummy. I wish I could shut out the world and finish my book. I wish I could shut out the world and just record a hundred podcasts, but it's all in a little bit of balance, right? That whole everything in moderation mindset. So little by little, you know, no matter what I'm doing, I'm always working on my personal brand because it just gives me so much joy to give back. It's so much fun. So much fun. Highly recommend it. And if you are married or in a relationship and you feel like he's always doing this and he's always doing that and he's such a workaholic, he's got his own thing and I just don't feel like I have my thing. Girl, find your thing. It's going to make you so attractive. He's going to be like, why are you still buried in that? Are you, are you done? Can we go to dinner now? What are you up to? Are you going to bed, honey? What's going on? How come you're still working? All of a sudden you're unreachable and that just makes you more attractive. And because something lights you up also makes you attractive. I didn't think I was going to turn this into like a dating relationship kind of podcast, but hey, what works, works. Women were attractive when we're passionate. Men love seeing a happy woman that's got something that just lights her up. That's such an attraction and it's attractive piece and nothing any new lip gloss or eyeliner could ever compete with. Seriously, you've got to give your passion some life. And if you're not clear on what that is, oh, you need to have a call with me. So that's another thing we start with when we're working with personal brands and building out that platform, we learn what we're passionate about. And sometimes it's not even what you think it is. Usually it's your friends or family that need, that can help you there. You have to ask them, do I talk about a certain topic all the time? Is there something that, you know, like you think I'm passionate about? Cause sometimes we're so close to it. We don't see it. So ask your peers, ask your family, ask people that see you on a regular basis. And always, always, if you can stop and look inward for a moment, focus on what you talk about all the time. Is there something you like to bring up often at happy hour with your family, whoever it is, you know, not saying happy hours with your family, but who, what topics do you like? Is it wellness? Is it, is it the latest crime junkie documentary or something? True crime stuff. Is it podcasting? I'm thinking to myself, is it books? (laughs) Is it certain Netflix shows? Is it certain certain type of genres that you seem to get pulled into? I'm a Hallmark queen, you know? It's like, well, there's all of that kind of ties together. And that's kind of how our brains work. It's like a ball of spaghetti or a ball of yarn. Just everything's interlaced. So ask your peers if you can't find the passion part. Trust me, sister, you've got it in you. You're just too close to it. So the number three out of the three compelling reasons why you should have a side hustle. Maybe I'll say need because should is such a shitty word, right? Shitty, 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 shitty. So three compelling reasons why you need to have a height side hustle. And this is Carrie, the big sister telling you what to do vibe is skill development. There's so much you can learn when you have that entrepreneur mindset, you see life differently. Have you ever seen a job post out there that says entrepreneur like minded people? What are they asking for? They're asking for people that will just do the job until the job gets done. Cause that's what an entrepreneur does. They drop, they're not thinking I'm just going to lock in and for two or three hours and I'm logging off. I'm going to just punch in, punch out. You're not getting me a second more than what my shift says I should be working. That is not an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur actually does the work, finishes the job, gets the project done, doesn't finish when they're tired. They finish when they're done. And there's just that drive. And if you've always wanted it, trust me, doing your little passion project, whatever that is, it can turn into a massive project. It can turn into, it can turn you into a millionaire if you want it to easily. 
the key thing is you're, you'll see your mindset shift. You'll go from victim to victor mindset. Victim mindset generally is I only got a 30% interest or not a 30% increase in my wages this past 10 years, or I haven't gotten a raise in 10 years. You know, that's a victim mindset. I don't have, and you, it's easy to do when you're an employee because everything's happening to you, not for you. You don't see that. You're just feeling so out of control. You don't have the driver's seat. You don't have the steering wheel. The reins are not in your hands as an employee. So you can, it's easy to slip into it so easy to start whining about your hours, start whining about lack of benefits. But when you have an entrepreneur mindset, you're, you're in the victor seat, you're in the driver's seat, you're making things happen. You see opportunity and instead of whining about it, you get up and do something about it. Now, even if you choose to stay in that job forever, that again, W2, punch in and punch out, taxed to death, Per, you know, employee job, there's nothing wrong with it at all, but <clears throat> you'll notice your skills change. Now you're a different kind of an employee. You're going to get more attractive to your employer. You'll probably get a promotion because now you're seeing business from a different side because you've got a side hustle now, whatever that looks like. And that side hustle is going to help you embrace new challenges. You're going to learn. You're going to turn into personal growth massively. You're going to start to feel unstoppable every time you make an, another dollar that you generated yourself. It's going to change your mindset around abundance. It's going to start to feel more believable and possible than it ever did before because you now control it. Once you learn this new money-making machine of online world or whatever that passion looks like, that side hustle, when you make your first dollar, you start to think differently about money. Now it's like, oh, I don't have that fear and lack. I know if I really want to make money, I have that control. I've learned how to do this. I can rinse and repeat it if I want to. I can work it as hard as I need to. Instead of, oh, I just got to wait and hope that, you know, my one year review goes through and I get a raise. Yay, I got a raise. And I hope I get enough hours and I hope my boss notices how hard I've been working, how many hours I've been putting in. Cause I really hope, hope, hope. Notice all that empty hope kind of feeling that every, all your happiness is in somebody else's hands. And that's not fun. Instead, there's a shift when you start to create money on the side that tells you, huh, I've got options. And that's a beautiful, powerful thing. Everybody wants options in life. No one wants to be stuck in a, in a rut going the same direction all the time. And it's kind of fun to see what you can create, what kind of money you can make. When you do it on your own, when I when I manifested 10 grand in like two days, I thought, oh my gosh, why have I been employed this whole time? What the hell was I waiting for? I felt so powerful in that moment. And you feel empowered. And this was right before I quit my corporate job over a decade ago. I was like, did this really happen? Yes. You set this up. You made it happen. It just made me feel like I could do anything. I felt unstoppable. And it might not be $10,000 to you. It might be $250, but you made it happen. I'll never forget the first time. Gosh, this was back in 2013. So 10 years ago that I generated an email list, working with my business coach, created a webinar and was selling my course at the time. This was a decade plus ago. I had already been doing this for my boss for five years. I've done more webinars than I can, than hairs on my head. I'm not kidding. <laughs> and I, there was something about people signing up for my webinar, not, not the corporation I was working for, but me, little old Carrie. I started to cry. It hit me like, oh, 200 people want to learn from me? They don't even know me. I'm just now put building my brand. 200 people want to learn from me? Little old Carrie from Michigan? It was such a surreal moment. And I was just like, am I even living this? This feels like a dream. I was so excited, guys. It's all the little baby steps. It's not even the payday. That is the fun part. There's so many more juicy, delicious moments in there of just 
having that side hustle from brand creation to collecting income is so much fun, so much fun. And it can be simple. It doesn't have to be complicated. Don't let tech or anything else, the technology of online business stop you because there's so many people that can help you do that. That's their side hustle. Virtual assistants can help you do that. There's so many options. There's always a way. Trust me, there's always a solution on the other side of whatever is keeping you stuck from having your own side hustle. So I say all that just to remind you again, number one, the streams of income. You got to have many streams just in case one dries up and think about it. Sometimes that extra stream of income is what takes, pays for your college, you know, your kid's college fund or that next vacation or that new car mama needs or hell, just a new pair of shoes, whatever that looks like. That extra stream of income might help put a roof on the house when things are, you know, when it's looking a little leaky, (laughs) so to speak. You never know. It could be that rainy day fund. And then of course, don't forget the tax write-offs, guys. Don't forget. You can write off so much when you have a side hustle, so much that helps counteract all those deductions and all those tax fees especially if you don't have a lot of assets to write off. If you don't own a home or your cars or property or investments, it can get a little frazzling around tax time. And it's frustrating when you don't have a lot to write off. You don't have kids, anything of that nature, you know, (laughs) those do come in handy. And number two is the sense of purpose, that fulfillment. I feel seen. I feel important. I feel heard. I've got my stamp on this earth. I'm going to leave a legacy. My passion finally gets to have some life to it. I'm breathing life into my passion. It has a logo. It has a vibe. It has a footprint on the internet. That is so yummy and delicious. Can I even tell you enough? And then again, number three is that new challenges, that self-growth, that feeling of I'm unstoppable. I can make money. Look at me. I'm so awesome. I can do this. I can do this. There's that whole new sense of empowerment that shows up as you embrace these new skills and the development going forward. A lot of my past clients, we used to joke and say, if you want, if you want personal development on steroids, go into business for yourself. It will mold you, shape you, embrace you, skill you in ways you never thought possible. Because truly that's what it is. A personal development course on steroids. That's what going into business truly does to you. You will, all the fears show up, all the shifts, all the challenges, things that you never thought you could, were capable of. But on the other side of it all is a new version of you, a better version of you. Embrace that. It will take you outside your comfort zone, but it will grow and expand you to the point where you may even grow and expand in your own job to get that next promotion, to take over the company, to to take on a leadership role, whatever that looks like, or you just silver lining, turn your side hustle into your main hustle. So when shifting things happen, it's not so scary when you see the writing on the wall, well, we might downsize. Okay, well then I'll just turn up the volume over here on my side hustle and offset some of that spending or the income or the differences there. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. I will do that often in my, in my own streams of income super helpful, super beneficial to have multiple. The more, the better, but just start with one. That's all you need to do. Don't start five tomorrow. Start one, one extra stream of income. That's it. Just one side hustle. And then just try it on. Dip a toe in the pool. You don't have to jump all in head first. Just try it out. What does that look like? And I will promise to do another podcast episode on side hustle ideas just to get you guys brain pick, you know, pick your brain, kind of brainstorm, get your juices flowing towards that creation and we'll see where it lands. So I promise to do one, look in the show notes. If you've already got a side hustle started and you've not done an LLC and you want to use LegalZoom, I've got the link in the show notes. Big hugs, big love. Enjoy this episode. Share it with a friend, save it, download it, all the things. Leave a five-star review. Big hugs, big love. See you on the next episode. Hi there, friend. If you enjoyed this episode, do me a favor and double check that you're subscribed or following. And if you've got a quick 30 seconds, 
It would mean the world to me if you could leave me a five-star review and share what you specifically liked about this episode. 